This video was originally uploaded on my gaming channel SideQuest, where you could have seen it a week early. Head over there and subscribe for more gaming focused content. In one of the first videos on this channel, I talked about why on the whole, despite some gems, Star Trek video games are pretty lacklustre and disappointing. Thus, I thought the perfect follow up to that video would be about why, for the most part, the opposite is true of the Star Wars video games. Just like before there is a general disclaimer in that I haven't played every single Star Wars game myself, the examples I'll mainly be bringing up in this video are from a set of five games which I had when I was younger called Best of Star Wars PC, which included Empire at War, Knights of the Old Republic, Jedi Outcast, Republic Commando, and Battlefront, although I will be mentioning some others as well. Unlike my Star Trek video games video, I also won't be going through specific games one by one. Instead, this video is to be a thesis on why I think Star Wars games are, in general, a lot better than what the Trek franchise has had to offer in the interactive medium. With all that out of the way, on to my first point. I want to make it clear that none of this is to insult the hard work which went into Star Trek games, but a lot of the time Star Trek's aesthetics were often simply bolted onto standard video game genre models. Star Trek Armada doesn't play much differently than any other standard paint-by-numbers RTS. However, the same is not true of games like Empire at War. Empire at War uses the Star Wars universe to shape the mechanics of the game in interesting ways. You can't just use Empire at War as any old RTS game. You get an inherently Star Wars experience. The asymmetrical warfare is integrated into the strategy of both sides. The Rebel Alliance has always focused way more on fighters and frigates, only getting anything approaching a cruiser much later in the game whereas playing as the Empire gives you Star Destroyer-like craft from the get-go. Sure, they aren't the biggest of the Star Destroyers in the game right away, but the differing approaches taken when playing as either side is in the game because of the universe. The same goes for the base building and resource management, and even the entire interface. The tropes of the RTS genre are there, of course, but there's just a greater degree of effort which has gone into making it all the more authentically Star Wars feeling. The original Battlefront doesn't just play like any generic military shooter. There's a class system like Team Fortress, but the weapon weapons and armor are all Star Wars appropriate. The propensity for vehicle combat also resembles Halo multiplayer in some respects, but each Star Wars vehicle plays in its own unique way, and the maps always offer their own unique battle arenas, obstacles, weapons and enemies. You can jump in a droid tank on Naboo, but in the forest moon of Endor, speeder bikes are your friends. The gameplay is designed to give fans the Star Wars experience they want, but also lets them have fun with the freedom the video game medium provides. Even with the broadest of genres and the thinnest of stories, these are games which feel authentic to the franchise fans have grown up with. You can argue that Total War games have more depth and Halo has more fidelity, but you can't get the Star Wars experience from those games. The second, and I suppose hugely important thing Star Wars games do, is actually delve deeper into the Star Wars universe than the big screen outings do. We get to see sides of the Star Wars universe in full which are only ever glimpsed on the big screen. Over a decade before The Mandalorian came along, we already got to play as a Star Wars bounty hunter in, well, Star Wars Bounty Hunter. And while Battlefront puts us in the shoes of an ordinary soldier, Republic Commander went a step further and put us in control of the clone version of SEAL Team 6 something which was only introduced in that game. And that's a huge part of what makes Star Wars games so fantastic. They contribute to the Star Wars franchise, not just in terms of entertainment, but also in terms of story. Knights of the Old Republic took us back thousands of years to a time when the Jedi and the Sith were both major powers, delivering a plethora of its own iconic ships, planets, and indeed characters. Star Wars Dark Forces introduced us to Kyle Katarn, a character who appears predominantly in several video games chronicling concurrent events with the original trilogy, as well as events well after the return of the Jedi. And the excellent recent Jedi Fallen Order once again showed us an era we haven't seen before. It gave us a new set of likeable characters, new world, and introduced us to new lore. Calling back to Star Trek games, Star Trek Voyager Elite Force is the only game I can think of which pulls off the same thing with the Star Trek franchise. Star Trek games for the most part are content to grab actors from various shows and put them in a sound booth for a few hours to get some voiceover dialogue. The novelty of playing as or alongside them wears off pretty quickly. Star Wars, on the other hand, uses its principal characters as powerful additions to the gameplay. Snagging the chance to play as Luke Skywalker on a battlefield feels rewarding and fun as hell. Using Darth Vader to mow down legions of rebels or rip entire buildings out the ground with a force is badass as well. But whereas Star Trek games have a handful of enjoyable personalities from the Elite Force Hazard team, Star Wars video games have dozens of characters just as rich, nuanced and loved as the most iconic of the movies. Star Wars games are simply more rewarding and enriching to play as fans of that franchise. 
A lot of the great things I've mentioned thus far is thanks in large part to the Star Wars franchise actually being united. Star Wars and its video games existed solely under Lucasfilms and LucasArts respectively, and it was because of this strong vision and unity of purpose that Star Wars video games became as great as they did. They were developed by fans of the very franchise, eager to explore parts of the universe they loved. Star Trek, on the other hand, for much of its recent history, has been divided between different entries and creative teams. While that's part of what made Star Trek so successful on the big and small screens, it has often resulted in the video games feeling left behind in the fray. Quick cash grabs rather than works of true passion. But of course, being so centralised is a blessing and a curse. The Disney era of Star Wars is highly controversial to speak about on YouTube of course, but EA's reign as the head honcho of producing Star Wars video games has left a lot to be desired. Jedi Fallen Order is great and apparently Battlefront 2 is really good now, but these successes are in spite of EA, not because of them. Despite all the potential being there, unfortunately it hasn't really been reached, but there may be hope for the future. At the time of this video, it's all just rumours and speculation right now, but it looks like EA might be giving up the Star Wars video game license soon. Support for Battlefront 2 has ended, no Battlefront 3 has been announced, and the next Star Wars game may possibly be a Jedi Fallen Order sequel, with Respawn's track record that pretty much guarantees another great game. Perhaps whoever gets the license next, or if another dedicated studio is created, there will be a consistent stream of great Star Wars games once again. Ben Jones asks, what TV shows do you enjoy outside of sci-fi and fantasy? Ooh man, there's loads. I had a recent stint of historical shows like Nightfall and The Last Kingdom. The Last Kingdom especially I really like and think it's pretty underrated in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I'm also partial to thriller type shows and detective dramas. I'm a big fan of both Luther and Line of Duty, which are both on Netflix. They're like polar opposites of each other. Luther is almost like a comic book world by this point, whereas Line of Duty is the most exciting paperwork has ever been. Uh, the makers of Line of Duty also made Bodyguard, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. And although I wasn't a huge fan of the most recent season, I do really like Killing Eve as well. Fleabag, by one of the producers of Killing Eve, is also brilliant. Uh, other comedies I really like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Parks and Rec, and I've been binging the crap out of Bob's Burgers too. That's a great show. I'm sure there are many others, but those are just the ones which spring to mind right now. TGAC Productions asks, Are there any more DC Animated Universe videos on the horizon? Not right now, I'm afraid. My previous DCAU videos were weird in that they weren't initially successful and then suddenly my why is awesome on the DCAU catapulted itself past 100,000 views one day. So I have no idea really if there's a big enough audience for that stuff in my subscriber base, although I'd absolutely love to do it. Maybe if I come up with a topic I'm really passionate about one day, I'll give that stuff another stab. But right now, I don't have any concrete plans for future DCAU videos. Frank Chavez asks, what are your thoughts on the upcoming Star Trek Strange New Worlds? From what I'm hearing, it's going to be everything I wanted it to be, pretty much. Uh, Anson Mount, Ethan Peck and Rebecca Romaine were all awesome in their roles, and I'm really excited to see them come back for their own show. I've been wanting that since Pike first showed up in Discovery, and I think it's a really cool thing that it's it's been greenlit, basically from the fan response. I'm also really encouraged by the comments made by Alex Kurtzman that it'll be more episodic and more light-hearted. I am a staunch Discovery defender. I've really enjoyed that show so far in large part due to it doing something truly fresh with the Star Trek formula and shaking things up. However, that being said, the Star Trek formula is a winning one to begin with, and to see those kinds of adventures again with the production values of modern Star Trek sounds brilliant to me. So yeah, I'm thrilled at that news and really excited to see that show when it comes out. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it. This was a follow up to an earlier video on Star Trek video games as you might have guessed. If you haven't seen it, you can find it elsewhere on this channel. We have more videos just like this in the works and are also planning on numerous gameplay videos on both Trek and Wars related games and beyond. Subscribe to stay up to date on all the new uploads, have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.